Sugo Fest exclusive Portgas D Ace debuted on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global on the 9th of February 2016. This character debuted alongside another Sugo Fest exclusive in Dracul Mihawk in the first Sugo Fest to drop two debuting legends simultaneously. This Sugo Fest recognized the first anniversary on the global side of the game, and with it came some awesome events. The most significant change to the game was the introduction of powers, or sockets as dubbed by the community. This feature is just as important today as it was upon first release, allowing debuff removal to act passively without having to dedicate crew slots to avoid enemy gimmicks. Portgaz D Ace was the first Sugo Fest exclusive character to focus on boosting a class rather than a typing, attempting to grant massive damage and a large HP pool to allow the shooter class to survive longer in fights, also dawning a special that can utilize the HP pool to deal huge damage to the enemy and keep matching slots for multiple turns. Introducing Black Clad Division Commander, Portgaz D Ace. In this series, we'll be traveling back in time to experience some of the older Sugo Fest exclusive characters in their prime, aiming to show just what it was like to use these characters on their debut. I hope you enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's enter the Legends of OPTC. And we're back with another episode of the Legends of OBTC series. Thank you very much for supporting. And in this video, this is a very special episode because this marks the official first anniversary of One Piece Treasure Cruise Global, releasing two legends in Strongwood Ace and also V1 Mihawk, or Dracul Mihawk. We'll talk about Mihawk in next week's episode. But of course, we are going to be covering the stuff with Strongworld Ace. Now, unfortunately, with Strongworld Ace, we were expecting the Strongworld Straw Hats to once again debut. However, these characters you guys are seeing here, the Zoro, the Usopp, and the Frankie in particular were the important ones. These characters didn't debut until September of 2016. Currently, this is the release of February 2016. So it wasn't for another seven months until Global got these characters. It was ridiculous. Strongwood Ace owners at the time were quite furious because we literally couldn't use the character. Strongwood Ace was the second legend that I had ever pulled, by the way. Um, I didn't pull him on this Sugo Fest. I don't actually remember what Sugo Fest I pulled him on. But uh, yeah, th this character was awesome, of course, on release. But we didn't get those really good shooter characters until a little bit later on, unfortunately. So we're not going to be covering uh, these particular characters, though we will be using maybe one or two of them in this video today. Let's go ahead and cover Strong World Ace, the Black Clad Division Commander. So Strong World Ace is a shooter character, obviously gains the Free Spirit class a little bit later on. Honestly, not too far away from, from now because the, the Free Spirit class released not too long after the first anniversary. So with Strongwood Ace, he was a shooter-based unit. He was the first legend in the game to be focused on boosting a particular class. So this character boosts the HP of shooters by 1.5 times, and then boosts the attack of shooters by 3 times with a matching slot, 2 times otherwise. On release, this was a fantastic captain ability. The only real problem with it was the fact that it was boosting only shooter characters. And shooters were, you know, probably one of the worst classes in the game at that point. They didn't have a lot of good support units. Uh, on, on the release of Japan, yeah, on, on Japan's release, they were fine uh, with, with this character. And was the best legend in the game, probably, you know, alongside Log Luffy. But on global, it was a different story. But the 1.5 health boost was ridiculous. This is the highest health boost in the game at this point. Uh, and the amount of HP that strong and ace teams could get access to is pretty ridiculous, especially if you partner it with the Moby Dick ship. The amount of HP you could get was uh, well over 50k at the time, which is definitely the highest that you could ever get. It was pretty absurd. Uh, but then boost the attack of shooters by three times with a matching slot, which I guess, you know, back in the day, they weren't like crewmate abilities. They were not really a thing. Um, so, you know, getting lots of other natural beneficial slots was pretty difficult. The only way you really got matching slots is if you literally landed on a matching slot. So getting the three times boost wasn't always the easiest thing to do, uh, but there were characters that could potentially help you out there. But otherwise it would be only a two times boost, which obviously wasn't too good. But with that amount of health pool, you could tank a lot of hits uh, and then go on your merry way. And then of course he does have a special ability that would go ahead and cut your crew's health by 40%, but then the amount of HP that was subtracted by that 40% is multiplied by 15 and is dealt as typeless damage to all enemies. So you could get some pretty crazy damage output with his special, and then he would also lock your slots for one turn. 
So if you're able to generate some matching slots for your crew, you can use his special ability to lock them for the following turn so that you can maintain his three times attack boost. So yeah, this is one of the best legends in the game upon release, especially on Japan. And this guy didn't really get good on global until September of 2016 when the Stronghold characters officially made their debut to the global version of the game alongside Raid Zephyr, for example, who was another very important character to the shooter team. So uh, that is the breakdown of Strongward Ace. Let's go ahead and uh, have a look at what kind of content we're going to be playing today. So as for the content that we're playing today, we are going to go ahead and take on a training forest, which is the first training forest that we're going to be challenging in the Legends of OPTC series. Now, as for training forest, the reason why we're picking that is because uh, Strongwood Ace, you know, when he, when everything was, was said and done, when he had all these Strongwood characters, when you had Raid Zephyr, he was probably the best legend in the game to take on training forest with, probably aside Log Luffy. And uh, I think that this would be a perfect opportunity to showcase what he could actually do in content once you had all of his best units to work with. So let's go ahead and spin this one and see what we can find. Jinbei is probably the easiest of these training forests. Shanks is probably the most difficult. And we've also got Aokiji and Hancock as well. Um, I'm not really too sure what I really want to see. Shanks would be obviously the most difficult, but let's see. Let's spin it and see what's going to happen. All right, we get Aokiji. I think Aokiji is probably the, the middle difficulty training forest. All right, let's see what happens with the uh, forest versus Aokiji. Very excited about this one. Not that good. It is int up, so I'm hoping that we can get some really powerful int unit. You know, Mihawk, Rayleigh, Nudge Nudge, you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, so that's one pull. Let's go ahead and do number two. And uh, yeah, as I said, guys, we really want to try and get a unit that we don't have. At least one unit out of these four pulls. If we don't have it, I'll be pretty happy. So let's see what we get here. Oh my! Oh my god! Oh my god! Yes! Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> Yo, guys! Oh my god! <laughs> we got freaking Ace! Not the best, like, legend to have at the moment, but definitely one of the best units to have in the future of One Piece Treasure Cruise, and holy mother of god. In the holy mother of Anaru. God freaking damn, Black Clad Flame Fist Portkist D Ace. <laughs> bruh, bruh, my heart is killing me right now. I had no idea that was gonna happen. And we're here in game now with Strong World Ace. And today we're gonna be taking him into the Aokiji Forest. So uh, I'm really, really scared to uh, to jump into this one. It's been a long time since I've used a Strong World Ace team. So I hope that we're able to get this done. Uh, this is the team that we are using today. And of course, uh, as you guys saw as well, we do have our sockets done because sockets were available now. And of course, by the time we reached this this point where the Strong World characters had released, uh, a, lot of a lot of people at this time had uh, a lot of their tomes maxed out for, for some of their legends. At least for, for some of them, for some of their characters, of course. But uh, for this particular team here, you see it's a bit obscure, but it, for those of you who had been playing back in the day when Stronghold Ace was, you know, arguably one of the best legends in the game, this team looks very familiar to you. Now, you may think that the order of these characters is a little bit wrong compared to what you would normally run on an Ace team, and that is correct. However, we do need to run things a bit differently because of the Aokiji Forest inherently, because on the final boss stage, the character in the bottom left-hand side where Usopp is, is binded for 50 turns, so we basically don't get access to that character at all so we did need to switch it up make sure we're running a, a, a concisive team we do have heracles to generate some matching slots for us probably one of the better units to use on an ace team we've got zephyr clash zephyr for an attack boost and then we've got marco for the healing capabilities and the slot boosting effect our previous episode i think actually was with legend marco and he's just a phenomenal unit to use on a lot of different teams because of the healing that he would provide and also giving you a damage boost which obviously is going to come into play okay strong one Usopp also on here really good for delayed as a health cut as well just a really good rare crew character on release basically a buffed version of uh, golden pound Usopp except for the fact that his cooldown was slightly higher but uh, still a very valuable asset to the team that's for sure so uh, without further ado guys let's go ahead and jump into the Aokiji training forest and this is it guys this is the go-to team right here unfortunately we do have to use a bandai friend captain not expecting anyone else to have a six star strong world ace with max sockets and candy but it is what it is uh, i'm very interested to see how this one's going to play out um so without further ado let's jump into it and we'll skip over to stage 11 because the, obviously the first 10 stages are a bit of fluff so we'll see you guys at uh at stage 11 
And here we are, guys, at stage 11. Also, something, something I forgot to mention at the very start, of course, is we are using the Moby Dick ship, which starts us off at 50% of our max HP. However, it does give us a 1.4 HP increase, which was obviously very useful for Stronghold Ace back in the day. And, of course, you're seeing here why the powers or the, uh, the sockets were very valuable. And this is one of the key pieces of content where if you did not have your sockets maxed, there was just absolutely no way you were getting through this content. So getting that done was very important. And uh, here we are with the uh, stage 11 right now versus the pheasant training forest. So let's see what we're going to do here. I think uh, for quite a few stages, we're probably just going to do normal attacks to get our way through. And I guess we'll kind of work from there. So we definitely want to take down the guys with the low cooldown first. These guys have really low HP at the start, so not really too much of a problem right now. We probably didn't even need to stall here. We could just kill this character and move on. I mean, we could kind of stall just a little bit to get some, like, HP back because uh, we don't have full HP yet. We do have max auto heal, of course, but we uh, we don't have a lot of HP going on right now. Okay, so now we've got Smoker and Tashigi. So, uh, what does this guy do? I think he here, he binds our captain for, like, four turns or something. So, again, this is why sockets were so valuable, right? Because even if you, like, had full sockets, you still were not unbinded. Uh, very, very important to get that done. So, I guess we could kind of stall one turn get some matching slots and then take down Tashigi because then we'll have our full captain effect. We have our full matching slots. So let's do that. Let's do that. Tashigi should go down easily. Okay, we could have probably killed there, but it's probably not too bad, honestly. But what we really should do is try and get as many matching slots as possible. So let's try and get a matching slot on the Usopp, because we, we're going to probably need it for the next room. The next room has uh, some mobs that we need some uh, some matching slots for. So we need a, we definitely need a matching slot on Usopp. Luckily, like, the you know, this is really old content, right? A lot of the bosses don't do a lot of things, so you actually get a lot of opportunities to do some decent stall. You can see we get a recovery slot there. We're going to pick that up, get some recovery back, of course. We got a slot on Usopp. Let's see if we can just kill here. Beautiful. Okay, let's see. Uh, battle 13 is going to be... Oh, okay, against Domino. Okay, so we've got a bunch of these mobs here. Uh, and our units are going to be binded. But of course, Socket's very, very important once again. So we are going to kill these guys with our matching slot characters. So let's see what we've got here. Okay, this should this should work okay. Let's see how this goes. Um, like this. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good. Of course, we could use an ace there to just kill the mobs, but of course, we want to try and conserve as much HP as we possibly can. Very, very important that we do that. But at this point, unfortunately, Zephyr didn't get a matching slot. Would have been really, really nice if we did. Let's just move on. Of course, if we don't have a matching slot, we're only getting two times attack with Ace's captain effect. Boom, there we go. So we're on stage 14 now, so let's see what we got here. We have a, um, Sadie. Sadie with a bunch of the Minotaurs. So, defense up. You know, defense up uh, nowadays is a very, very scary buff on the enemy. First things we're going to do, let's go ahead and start using some specials. I'm sure that's the most exciting thing here. Let's go ahead and use Heracles. Now, you may think, why why, why would you use Heracles on, a, on, a, on an ace team, right? Uh, obviously, he's a shooter character, so he does work. But why would you use him, right? Well, this was the fact, this is this is why the dream team existed. Because you had this special that would generate a full board of, like, rainbow slots, right? Strength X quick, Psy Ant, and a recovery slot. And you can manipulate it in such a way that you could guarantee yourself some slots, okay? So let's go ahead and give Usopp the quick slot, let's give the int slot to Zephyr, and let's give the deck slot to Ace. So at this point, we basically have as many matching slots as we possibly can, and the, the thing is, is you see that they are locked. Old school Heracles would not lock your slots, it would just generate the slots for you, and then normally you'd go ahead and use the Ace special here, which is going to do a pretty good amount of damage here, and it doesn't quite kill everyone, but it's not bad. Kill Sadie, and we'll kill the four turn cooldown character. And then at that point, we can kind of just do whatever we want. Yeah, we're kind of good here. Let's actually eat this recovery slot. Do as much damage as we can. And now we can just kind of stall things off here, which is kind of nice. And there we go. We're moving on to stage 15 now against Suru Onigumo and also Momonga. So I think on this stage, we're probably going to use an Usopp special to delay them. That seems like a really good idea. Let's go ahead and delay them. And it also does a 10% health cut, which is kind of nice. So we're going to use that. And then for Momonga, I guess we're just going to kill him first because we do have 
all of our matching slots. I don't know how much damage we need to do in order to kill. Like, can we conserve some of these matching slots here? I don't know if we can. Um, it would be nice to conserve the ace slot damage for the Onigumo, but I think Suru actually heals after turn one or turn two, so it probably doesn't matter. All right, let's do as much damage as we can. Boom, and then Zephyr, and we did that pretty much as perfect as we possibly could. And Suru goes ahead and activates her special and does all the healing annoying things. Super, super annoying. So how much does it heal? Okay, heals him back to full. That's kind of triggering. So I guess we're just going to deal as much damage as we can here. Let's go. Would be nice to uh, get some matching slots, that's for sure. Ace does a lot of damage. So as long as we can generate some slots, yeah, that looks good to me. All right, let's go ahead and eat this recovery slot as well. That's going to be kind of useful to get. Boom, beautiful. Okay, that's actually looking really, really nice. So now Suru's just left. So at this point here, we can literally just continuously stall as much as we really need to. Uh, try and get all of our specials back. That would be ideal. Obviously, we could have probably killed on that turn there. But it's probably a good idea and a wise idea just to try and conserve. And this is one of the good things that Ace could do. Is because you have so much health to play with, you could stall for a pretty long time. So that was a really, really big thing with him. So, I mean, we could literally just like keep tapping with our characters and potentially get some recovery slots to heal back some HP. That would be kind of nice. But... But honestly, we just want to make sure that we get our specials back so that when, like, that they'll be ready when we actually need them. And there we go. We have killed Suru moving on to stage 16 now against Helmeppo, Kobe, and Garp. Okay. So we have a lot of our specials ready to go now, which is really, really good to see. Um, so let's see. We are going to go ahead and use the Heracles special. We're going to do a bit of burst here. So let's go ahead and use Heracles. Going to generate some slots for our crew again. And once again, this is just showing off why this team was so good. So we could get the orb for Usopp, the orb for Zephyr, and the orb for Ace. Boom, there we go. We can use the Ace. Normally would be our orb locker, but because Heracles is buffed in 2021, you know, you kind of don't need to use Ace, but we're going to do it anyway because we want to do as much damage as we possibly can. Special animation of Ace looked really good back in the day too. Still looks kind of fine honestly do a pretty good amount of damage there but uh we actually want to do some manual targeting here because we want to actually target down garp he is going to be one of the biggest problems that we're going to be needing to deal with let's go ahead and do this i'm really really scared bro all right here we go let's do it That was actually not a lot of damage. I thought it would have been a little bit more damage than that, but I guess it could have been worse. You know what we really should have done? Was we probably should have activated Marco's special ability. We're going to activate that now anyway, because we want to get as many uh, or as much health back as we possibly can, and now we can start stalling for his special again. That was probably something I should have done. Would have done a lot more damage on that stage. Would have definitely killed Garp. Uh, but at least we got it now. So now we're going to kill Garb. Um, Kobe is not going to attack us on turn one, which is something good to see. And we don't need to eat this recovery slot anymore. Ideally, we'd like to use it, though, to get uh, as, as much... Uh, as, uh, as many matching slots as possible. That's going to be ideal. So let's go ahead and attack. Okay, so now Kobe shouldn't attack... Oh, well, he did attack us turn one. That was a little bit of a misstep, but it's fine. We've still got a lot of health. I'm not really too concerned about that. I'm going to stall another turn here, but we will... I think it's because he's below 20%. That's probably the reason why he did that. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, was that is that going to be a death hit? Dude, that nearly scared me, dude. All right, so we are going to kill this guy off. We have a lot of... Uh, actually, do we need to stall for specials? Hmm. No, I think we're good. We've got a lot of matching slots here. I'm not really too concerned about that. So I think we, uh, we should be pretty good here just to move on. All right, beautiful. So now we're on stage 17 against Berry Good and Aokiji. Those of you who are old school players would know how this went down, right? Um, the thing about this was, this is kind of a controversial stage. When this training forest came out, Zephyr was not released yet initially, right? And the thing was, Zephyr and Ayn from the raid boss were these two characters on this stage. Um, the Berry Good was replaced by Ayn, and then you had Zephyr who was replaced by Aokiji. And at the time, Global didn't have Zephyr or Ayn. So we were wondering, you know, when are these characters coming out? And obviously, Obviously, when this training forest got announced, we were getting excited, but of course, the characters weren't even on here. They were actually outright replaced. So they do the same things as what Zephyr and Ayn did on the initial uh, Japan training forest, but just a really weird situation that happened. It was very bizarre. But anyways, let's go ahead and just do normal attacks and uh, and kill these guys off. Let's, um, yeah, let's just attack. Let's do it. Ace, of course, doing a lot of damage. Pretty good, pretty good. 
what does this guy do on turn one? He does the Ice Time Capsule Bottom, so it's just going to be some, some binding. He has an immunity buff as well, so we can't delay him at this point, which kind of sucks. But he's only on a two-turn cooldown. So at this point here, we probably just want to keep stalling for specials once again and just get as many recovery slots as we can, do as much damage as we can to Aokiji, and just progress on once we are kind of ready to go. So this is stage, what, 17? Yeah, this is stage 17. So we've, we're only, we're actually really, really close to the end here. So uh, we're just going to keep stalling. All right, so we're going to move on to stage 18 now. We only got a little bit of extra stall off, but this is a scary stage right here. So this is with all of the Warlords. See Boa Hancock using a special there. Now, the thing is, is we actually get given an orb boost here. Um, I think it's like a, I don't know how big of an orb boost it is. It's probably like a 1.1, 1.2, something like that. It's a really minor orb boost. I'm not really too sure what it is, but um, this is kind of a problem because of course we can't even use Marker Special anyway, but getting Marker Special for when we need to move on to the next room is obviously going to be important. So let's go ahead and, uh, and use some special abilities. Let's go ahead and use Heracles first, of course, generate some matching slots. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's go. Uh, we're going to give a matching slot to Usopp, matching slot to Zephyr, matching slot to Ace. So that's already a good start. Let's do as much damage as we can with the Ace Special. Hopefully it does do a pretty good amount of damage. Hopefully uh, it doesn't, it just takes him out a little bit. Let's see. Okay, Kuma's gone. A little bit of damage done across the board there. Actually, you know what we should have done? I'm going to reset the game real quick. Okay, so we're going to try this again. First of all, we're going to use Usopp special first because we get a health cut off of him. That's way better to use that first. And then we can go ahead and use the Ace special. So once again, Heracles, generate those matching slots, please. Thank you very much. Boom, boom, boom. And now we're going to go ahead and use Ace's special, which does a lot of damage. So now we get the health cut plus the damage, which looks a lot better. Okay, now we need to think about how we want to do our attacks here, okay? But of course, we can use the Zephyr special, which is going to give us an attack boost. That's very important. We want to make sure we get the attack boost as well. Uh, the 1.75 attack boost, and that is for two turns, by the way. Very, very useful. Thing is, is this stage is, is renowned uh, and infamous for having very, very annoying targeting because the characters are spread so far apart that if we start attacking on Boa Hancock, it's almost impossible to start targeting these two guys on the side. So I think we're going to start with the one of these two characters on the side. Our orbs are locked, so we will keep them for the following turn. We're going to have an attack boost still in the following turn. We still have the orb boost, of course. All right, let's try it. Let's, I don't know. I don't know, man, but we'll see how we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Ooh, that was a really good turn. That was really, really good. All right, so now we've still got all of our buffs active. Now we're going to... Let's just fully target Dofi because we're going to be stalling a little bit on, on Moria. Moria is our stall character here. We do need to do a bit of stall because we do have this eight-turn orb boost that we need to get rid of before we move on to the next room. So we need to leave when the orb boost is on, I think, six turns because I believe they have a, a preemptive on the next room. Pretty sure they do. So that's going to be annoying. So let's go ahead and target Dofi, do as much damage as we can. We're going to eat that recovery slot as well. And uh, I guess leave Usopp last. We'll see, we'll see. Let's do it. Okay, that worked out perfectly. So now we've got Moria to stall on. And as I said, we need to try and get our um, our cooldowns ready to go. And we need to make sure that that, uh, that orb boost that is on our team is removed. Unfortunately, had to use one of those slots there. Can we get some good luck with slots? Oh, we got very good luck with slots. That's very good. But of course, we do have level 3 uh, matching slot right up with our sockets, which is obviously a huge, huge benefit to us here. So of course, we do want to heal with Marco, but of course, we're going to lose a lot of HP if we use Marco first and then use Ace. I mean, these guys already have a lot of HP anyway, so you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, worry about Ace's damage being enough with his special. I feel like it's probably the better idea to use the Ace special first, which is going to obviously cut our health, do a little bit of damage. We want to keep these orbs locked because we have pretty good orbs right now and then using marker to heal us all the way back to full and that's going to go ahead and give us a 1.5 times orb boost which is going to be huge for us right now and now we have these slots with a 1.5 orb boost for two turns all right we're going to take down garp first very important we take down him first and then we can target sengoku so wish us some good luck here we go oh very good damage there very, very good damage. So basically, Garp has like a countdown, and after he reaches zero, he does a lot of damage, of course. So at this point here, we're just going to keep attacking and do the exact same thing that we just did. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue. Let's go.
Wow, okay, I probably shouldn't have killed there. We, we did, we could have got one additional turn of stall just for free. I probably should have taken that. But we are on the boss stage of Aokiji, man. Can you believe it? We're on the final boss stage right now. The, the, just the real question is right now, are we going to be able to kill? We have a lot of HP to play with. However, I would like to get Marco special back. The thing is, is this Aokiji on the final boss stage essentially does the same kind of things and the same gimmicks as the Clash Aokiji, which we actually did on the Log Luffy episode as well, if you guys want to check that out. So, uh, we're just going to continuously, like, attack and do as much stall as we can to ensure that we get our specials back. So, uh, again, I don't really remember the gimmicks, but I'm, I remember it was pretty passive. Like, he doesn't really do too much. Uh, we do not want to get in below 50%. That is the important thing. We do not want to get in below 50%. That's going to be very, very bad if that is the case. Um, but we do want to try and get 14 turns of stall here. Of course, he doesn't really do that much damage, or he's not attacking until, like, after three turns have passed. And uh, we're going to keep that recovery slot there. That's going to be very, very nice. He actually doesn't have too much HP, so I feel comfortable with, like, doing whatever we need to do. That's a lot of damage, though. If he halves our HP every turn... Wait, is that all he really does? If he, does, he, does he just continuously halve our HP? That's actually going to be kind of easy if that's the case. We've got a nine turns remaining at this point. He does a normal attack here. Only 5,000 damage. Yeah, that's nothing, dude. That's absolutely nothing. Not concerned at all at this point. Okay, so at this point, our, our, our specials are ready to go. But we need to make sure that we get him a little bit closer to 50% just to ensure we're able to get the win. Just to be safe, you know what I mean? Just to just to be that, that little bit extra safe, man. Let's go from here. I feel comfortable from here, okay? It's time, guys. It's time to use all of our specials. Now, as I said a little bit earlier when we're on that stage with Garpins and Goku, we used the uh, A special first and then we healed back up. I think we're going to do the reverse this time because this is like, this is this is all or nothing right now. Let's go ahead and use the Marker Special first. It's going to heal us all the way back to full. So that means when we use Ace Special, it does more damage, of course. It minuses more HP, resulting in more damage. Let's use the Heracles Special to generate our matching slots that we need for our crew. And there we go right there. Unfortunately, we cannot switch the recovery slot out, but that really doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and do this. Do this. And, you know, my, uh, uh, nah, Ace getting a neutral slot is probably better than Marker having that. So, you know, that's... We do have to switch one more slot, though, which is kind of annoying. You know what? It's fine. We'll just give this ace the, the, the matching orb. That's fine. And let's use the ace special to do as much damage as we possibly can. How much damage are we going to be doing here? And we can activate both aces here as well. 300k. Look at that. Boom. It is, it is just absolutely GG at this point. We win. Can you believe it? The first training forest on the Legends of OPTC series. Coming out with the dub. I mean, we haven't attacked yet. We haven't attacked yet. But, hey, it's looking like a dub right now. Get the 1.75 times attack boost from Zephyr. And without further ado, guys, here's the final attacking turn. Here we go. There it is. We beat the Pheasant Training Forest with the Strongwood Ace, the god of Training Forest back in 2016, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today, man. It was a bunch of fun going back to the old school teams of Strongwood Ace. So, so much fun. So that's going to wrap up another episode of the Legends of OPTC series. And of course, in the next episode, we're going to be taking a look at Dracul Mihawk, which is the other debuting legend on the first anniversary of One Piece Treasure Cruise Global on the 9th of February, 2016. I really hope you guys are enjoying the series as much as I am creating it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video today. And if you guys have enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.